last week I predicted for you that Trump's assassination of General Soleimani of Iran would be unpopular. Well, now the verdict is in. 56% of Americans say they disapprove of President Trump's handling of heightened tensions with Iran, according to an ABC News poll conducted by Ipsos Public Affairs. Why it matters. 52% of Americans said the Trump administration's decision to kill General uh, Qasem Soleimani in an airstrike makes them feel less safe, despite assurances from Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and other officials that the U.S. is safer with Soleimani gone. By the numbers, approval of the airstrike breaks down along party lines. 87% of Republicans approved of Trump's decision-making on Iran, and 54% said they feel safer. 90% of Democrats said they disapproved, and 82% feel less safe. But here's the key part, guys. 57% of independents, a key electoral target for both parties, disapprove of Trump's handling of the situation, with 51% saying they feel less safe. So there's, you know, a lot of information there. Um, 87% of Republicans are acting incredibly sycophantic. And, you know, now we know. The, the principled anti-war Republicans, 13% of the party. Or 13% 13, 13 of Trump supporters are principled in their anti-intervention stance. So 87% fell right in line, so they approved of Trump's decision-making, which is wild. But the interesting part, though, is 54% said they feel um, safer, which means 46% said, I, this doesn't make me feel safer. So, But that's just the Republican numbers. The other stuff is more interesting to me. 90% of Democrats disapproved. 57% of independents disapproved. And again, the overall number, 56% of Americans say they disapprove of Trump's handling of Iran. Now, here's the reason why I made that prediction, and it came out to be true. When we had the Iraq War, George W. Bush spent at least a year propagandizing the American public, trying to make them think that Saddam Hussein was about to attack us. The argument was, oh my God, Saddam Hussein... Um, worked with Osama bin Laden to do 9-11. And, and then, you know, that changed to Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction, and the implication is if we don't do something, he's going to use it on us. And then eventually they move the goalposts all the way to just, he's a bad guy, he's a dictator, he's a bad guy, so we got to take him out. But they spent a year trying to tell you, oh my God, he's responsible for 9-11, and oh my God, he has weapons of mass destruction. So when you feed the media propaganda and they relentlessly push it out there and you got Dick Cheney going around giving speeches telling everybody to be afraid and you do it for an extended period of time people eventually start to believe the lie and that's what happened people believe the lie and you have Colin Powell famously going to the um you know the UN holding up a vial saying see he's building uh you know he's building weapons of mass destruction so they sold the public on it because they were relentless in their propaganda so when we started the Iraq war Guys, the approval rating was like 80 or 90 percent. It was overwhelming. And historically, not just for the U.S., for any country, historically, if you build up the threat enough and then the president or the leader takes us to war, people generally fall in line because they want to feel patriotic and they want to feel like, you know, we're doing the right thing and our, our strong leader is taking us through this tumultuous time. So, and I think that that's part of Trump's reasoning as to why he did this, because you know, he's politically embattled at this moment. And you got the impeachment that got through the House. And uh, we'll get to a story later as to more specifics as to why he did what he did. But Trump famously said in 2011 that he thinks Obama is going gonna, is gonna to bomb Iran so that he gets reelected. So that's the way this guy's mind thinks. Even though he says a lot of anti-war stuff on the campaign trail, he also thinks, well, hey, if I do, you know, a bombing, well... Then that'll help me get reelected because the country will go, our strong leader is showing that everybody who's boss. That's the way Trump's mind thinks. Again, he said it. He said it in 2011. Obama's going to bomb Iran to get reelected. That's what he said. He thought that would help him in his reelection. So the election's, you know, a year away, and Trump assassinated a top Iranian general. Um, but people are against it because they didn't even bother to propagandize you. They didn't even bother to make a BS case beforehand. Again, we're all minding our business one day and the news breaks that we assassinated a top Iranian general, sparking an international crisis. 
So when you didn't propagandize us beforehand, people are, people's response is going to be, what did Trump do? He, he murdered an Iranian general? Who's this guy? Why should we have been afraid of him? What, did he, what was he in the process of doing? And then they were working, they were behind the eight ball from the beginning. They're running around like, um, yeah, he posed an imminent threat, and by an imminent threat, I don't mean against our country, I mean against maybe, maybe not people in the region actively plotting to do so. Don't ask for evidence, I don't have any evidence, but shut up and accept it. Well, everybody's gonna be like, how about you, www.pissoff.com, and that's the reaction. So, this is a historically unpopular move as far as military action goes. Because it took people an extended period of time to turn on the Iraq war, guys. It took people an extended period of time to turn on the war in Afghanistan. You know, as of 2013, and this is the most recent polling I've seen, only like 17% of the country still wants to be in Afghanistan. More unpopular than Vietnam. But it took a long time to get to that point because we were, we were propagandized early on. For Trump, he didn't propagandize us. He assassinated his top general, sparked an international crisis, and, you know, then he turns around and expects everybody to heap praise on him. It's like, wh what? What? And of course it doesn't mesh with the occasional anti-war stuff he said on the campaign trail. So there's the, you know, the issue of being a massive hypocrite and having no actual, you know, philosophical or ideological underpinning for his actions here. So, the end result, this was unpopular. This was unpopular. And I think that it kind of woke people up to something that's, you know, we've known about Trump for a while, but maybe this is the most stark example of it. It's the, like, impulsive nature. The, you know, yeah, yeah, do it. Like, what? wait, what? This is, like, something that should require a tremendous amount of thought and nuance and, and careful decision-making. He's like, yeah, I just assassinate him. What? <laughs> this, it's not like taking out a non-state actor. This guy was a, a state actor. An Iranian general is a state actor. You put them in a position where they have to respond. And they did respond. Thankfully, they were very clever and intelligent about it. And they warned the U.S. And then we, they attacked that base without, you know, having any casualties. But, you know, this was, uh, you're really playing with fire here. And you're really showing just how impulsive this guy is. So, people were against it. Now, you know, this gets to the final point I'll make in this story, which is, Democrats, here you go. Go to town go to work, you know, don't shut up about this. It's weird because Democrats always convince themselves they're playing a losing hand when they're playing a winning hand. Because this is one of those issues where if you hammer away, you can make, forget 56% uh, disapprove of this, you can get this number to 75% disapprove of this. If you're the ones who are aggressive, you're the ones who point out what he actually did here, you're the ones who point out that there, there was no threat from this guy, that's utter nonsense, they're lying. So if you that, you could win, but no. <laughs> What's going to happen? We're already seeing it happen. Democrats are swatting this aside to go right back to impeachment and what a Twilight Zone world we live in where Donald Trump can assassinate a foreign leader with impunity, but he gets impeached over a bad phone call. And that's where we are, and that's a shame because this is something that you should go to work over. And, you know, this... this can be one of the main issues now that Democrats run on, and they would win on that, because the American people didn't want this, and now the numbers show it.